We welcome you into Commonwealth TV. We're introducing you to some of the top uh, health IT experts in the industry and find out exactly why interoperability is so important to them and their organization. And this guy is pretty important to our organization. That is the new executive director here for Commonwealth as Paul Wilder. And, and Paul, maybe right out of the gates, maybe the why. What was so intriguing to you about wanting to, to become of this Commonwealth family? Yeah, well, I spent a, a long time in health IT, and I've also spent a longer time as a health consumer, patient, uh, father, husband, and the like. And uh, for years, I was doing you know good product work, felt like making a difference. There's this moment uh, just over 10 years ago, approaching 11 now, that my first daughter was born. And I remember the trials and tribulations of getting my daughter's record from a facility in New York City across the Hudson River, about two miles away to her second hospital she was seeing on her third day of life. And I, I recall her, uh, you know, the, the, it was heart wrenching, right? The amount of extra tests and uh, meningitis tests, spinal tap, a uh, ton of extra tests that had already been done, you know, watching your daughter at three years old in pain. And at that moment, I said, there's got to be a better way. There's no reason that something two miles away uh, should be that difficult to get to provide better care for myself, for my kids, and for everyone around us. And so I jumped straight headfirst into interoperability, and that eventually got me to here, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Well, let's, let's jump back a little bit then. So tell us a little bit about how Commonwealth is different, maybe some, uh, from some of the other organizations that you've worked with. Yeah, so you know, in the beginning, I did a lot of imaging, so radiology, cardiology, uh, imaging side as well as informatics, and you know, there it's more practical. Uh, you're looking at stuff inside, and practical by mean it's uh, you know exactly where the data is going to be used. There's a modality here generating an image, and there's a system over here looking at the image, and they're a hundred yards away at most, right? There, it's it's obvious what's happening. And interoperability, when you start looking past the silos of the or the silo created by the four walls of a hospital or of a practice, it starts to get a little fuzzy. You start looking at it going, you know, what's happening between and why aren't we exchanging data between? And more importantly, what could we do better if we did? Uh, and I think that's, that's a lot different than a lot of the systems I used to work on, where you're really looking at a provider generating data that they're going to look at later or at that moment versus a provider generating data that someone six months from now, or one year from now, could find very valuable that's completely separate from them. It's a different problem, a different, a different thing to tackle. Uh, and I, I knew it was possible to fix it. Uh, and a thing like Omlo popped up, uh, you know, looking in 2013, I said, aha, that's how, that's how we attack these things. I've been watching it for years. And when the chance came to come over, I, I jumped in. So, Paul, let's, uh, let's see what, what's in store for 2020 for interoperability and then maybe look beyond that five years and then even more to the distant future. What, what do you see out there? Yeah, so I, I wouldn't call myself a futurist, but I do, I do think about it. Uh, in fact, you know, going back to you know, 2012, 2013, when I was looking to really jump into this, I was really looking at what can I help now to make it get to a point where it's really operating better? Uh, and right now, the, the big thing I see is, uh, first of all, the amount of usage is skyrocketing. Uh, and I think that there's good and a bad there. The good news is people, there's demand, uh, there's enough supply, and people are using it. That's great. Uh, I, I am cognizant of the risk of too much data. Uh, a lot of alerts, we all have, you know, we've heard of alert fatigue and data fatigue. So I think the future is apps, uh, systems, EHRs, and whatever, and the like, that use this data better, right? Right now we're looking at uh, primary care providers, specialists, inpatient care environments, uh, home care, hospital, everything, and they're getting a lot of data, uh, and it's it's helpful, especially if you know where to look in that data set. I think the next wave is taking that future deluge, because even now it's big, but it's getting bigger every day. We saw a quadrupling in the amount of documents per day in the last month, a quadrupling. That's, that's uh, an exponential rate that we don't see stopping anytime soon. So uh, I, I think the future is things that use that data help make better clinical decision support systems, better advisories to, to providers be able to then dig deeper and skip past the basic stuff. Uh, we're also seeing a good shift towards helping with administrative things. It's a uh, Quite frankly, annoying as a patient when you have to keep repeating the same stuff that 
you know is out there somewhere that the provider can go and find. And then you're really doing corrections versus you know, primary data. You, you already know that I had an appendicitis. You already know that I have allergies. Let's talk about what's changed from the stuff that you know now and move from there. Paul, how can Commonwealth help the patient when it comes to uh, uh, being able to utilize maybe a nationwide sort of network? Yeah, well, the patient is key to the future of, of healthcare. All right, they, they always were. They are the center point. They're the things that we're providing care for. And uh, I'm not going to say we lost our way, but at some, some points we did. We kind of looked at them as uh, part of a machine. There's a, a process unit that comes in. It's a human, and out goes a ho hopefully better, healthier human. And I think now, uh, as you saw with finance and other industries where people start to have more control of and access. Right? You go back you know, 50 years ago, the average person didn't have access to a broker. It was too expensive. It was for the elite and uh, healthcare was never set up that way. But now we're looking at the human, the citizen, myself, a consumer, a patient can get access to the data and jump in with their provider with that record. The best users of EHRs I see out there are providers that bring a person into the record. And you're starting to see more of that too. It started out with the computer was a distraction. I'm typing, I'm doing my thing and I'm no longer seeing the patient over here. And you start seeing providers now swing the screen around and say, here's what I'm seeing. Do I have this right? And how do we help you get better? Let me show you the result, not just talk to you about the result. And so now I find as, as myself, as a great portal user, I'm finding pieces of data that they're saying isn't relevant that I want to track because I know something they don't know about my past. And I think the access to the data for the patient level allows us to be more involved with our care. Uh, track what we're doing, and the, the true dream is to help other people. That's my mother, that's my daughter, is to go up and down the stack and be able to be good caregivers. Because uh, for us to sustain healthcare and to do it at scale with as many people that are getting elderly every day, that doesn't stop. Uh, we all need to be this in together, and I think more data is going to help. And, and Paul, finally, what would you say maybe is a, a misnomer or maybe miscommunicated when it comes to to Commonwealth that you've seen here over, over the course of time that you'd like to maybe set straight, perhaps? Uh, I'd say competition. Uh, there are other networks out there that are national. There's only really three of us. Now, there's other kind of more uh, private players, but in reality, it's eHealth e -Health Exchange Network. Uh, you, know, you have Care Quality and you have us. And there's often, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's always nice to have a little competition. It's always good to know someone's doing something better that you want to catch up on and do it better. But quite frankly, we cheer that on, right? We watch and we say, if you build a better mousetrap, then we better build a, build a better mousetrap and make sure it works together. And I think where we're going right now with TEFCA and the idea of creating a national framework for us all to interconnect to is, is the right step. Because now we're looking at, sure, we can compete a little bit on ideas and vision and how fast we get there and how cheap we do it, but the data has to flow. And I go back to like early email. It's, it's unsustainable to have an email system that only other people that have that system sign up to can use. We can't, we're not all going to be on Gmail. We're not all going to be on Hotmail or Outlook or on Exchange. There's a mix of things out there. And then it has to be interoperable. And right now, uh, we have these multiple networks. The golden spike hit with Commonwealth and Care Quality joining each other last year in terms of data streams. But now we got to go one step further to standardize the way we identify patients match data flows and do event notifications around through multiple networks. So it's an exciting time. And uh, you know, I, I'd say uh, competition is the thing that I like to set straight. You know, we're not competitive. We're all, we're all in this together. Well said, Paul. And I know we're very excited to have you aboard here as the uh, new executive director of Commonwealth and the entire Health Alliance. And for more on how you can become a member, we invite you to log on to commonwealthalliance.org. Thanks so much, Paul. Thank you.